Quiz one, part one, planting the trees of Kenya. As Wangari Mati tells it, when she was growing up on a farm in the hills of central Kenya, the earth was clothed in this dress of green. Fig trees, olive trees, croutons, and flame trees covered the land and fish filled the pure waters of the streams. The fig tree was sacred then, and Wangari knew not to disturb it not even to carry its fallen branches home for firewood. In the stream near her homestead, where she went to collect water for her mother, she played with glistening frog's eggs, trying to gather them like bees into necklaces, though they slipped through her fingers back into the clear water. Her heart was filled with the beauty of her native Kenya when she left to attend a college run by Benedictine nuns in America, far, far from her home. There she studied biology, the science of living things. It was an inspiring time for Rangari. The students in America in those years dreamed of making the world better. The nuns too taught Wangari to think not just of herself, but of the world beyond herself. How eagerly she returned to Kenya, how full of hope in all it, in, in, of all that she had learned. She had been away for five years, only five years, but they might have been 20. So changed was the landscape of Kenya. When Gari found the fig tree cut down, the little stream dried up and no trace of frogs, tadpoles, or the silvery beads of eggs. Where once there had been little farms growing, what each family needed to live on and large plantations growing tea for export. Now, almost all the farms were growing crops to sell. When Gari noticed that the people no longer grew what they ate, but brought food from stores, the store food was expensive and the little they could afford was not as good for them as what they had grown themselves so that children, even grown-ups, were weaker and often sickly. She saw that where once there had been richly wooded hills with grazing cows and goats, now the land was almost treeless, the, the woods gone. Without trees, there were no roots to hold the soil in place. Without trees, there was no shade. The rich topsoil dried to dust, and the devil wind blew it away. Rain wash the loose earth into the once clear streams and rivers, dirtying them with silt. We have no clean drinking water, the women of the countryside complained. No firewood to cook with. Our goats and cows have nothing to graze on, so they make little milk. Our children are hungry and we are poorer than before. When Gari saw that the people who had once honored fig trees had now cut them down, had forgotten to take care for the land that fed them. Now, the land, weak and suffering, could no longer take care of the people, and their lives became harder than ever. The women blamed others. They blamed the government. But when Gari was not one to complain, she wanted to do something. Think of what we ourselves are doing, she urged the women. We are cutting down the trees of Kingu. When we see that we are part of the problem, she said, we can, we can become part of the solution. She had a simple and a big idea. Why not plant trees, she asked the women. She showed them how to collect tree seeds from the trees that remain. She taught them to prepare the soil, mix, mixing it with manure. She showed them how to, how to wet the soil, press a hole in it with a stick, and carefully insert a seed. Most of all, she taught them to tend the growing seed, seedlings as if they were babies, watering them twice a day to make sure they grew strong. It wasn't easy. Water was always hard to come by. Often, the women had to dig a deep hole by hand and climb into it to haul heavy bucketfuls of water up and over their heads and back out of the hole. An early nursery in Wangari's backyard failed Almost all the seedlings died, but Wangari was not one to give up, and she showed others how not to give up. All this was heavy work, but the women felt proud. Slowly, all of them, all around them, they could begin to see the fruit of the work 
of their hands. The woods were growing up again. Now, when they now when they would cut down a tree, they planted two in its place. Their families were healthier, eating from the fruit trees they had planted from the vegetable plots, filled again with the yams, cassava, pigeon peas, and sorghum that grew so well. They had work to do, and the work brought them together as one, like the trees growing together on the newly wooded hills. The men saw what their wives, mothers, and daughters were doing and admired them and even joined in. Wangari gave seedlings to the schools and taught the children how to make their own nurseries. She gave seedlings to inmates of prison and even to soldiers. You hold your gun, she told the soldiers, but what are you protecting? The whole country is disappearing with the wind and water. You should hold the gun in your right hand and a tree seedling in your left. That's when you become a good soldier. And so in the 30 years since Wangari began her movement, tree by tree, person by person, 30 million trees have been planted in Kenya and the planting has not stopped. When the soil is exposed, Wangari tells us, it is crying out for help. It is naked and needs to be clothed in its dress. That is the nature of the land. It needs color. It needs its cloth of green. Okay, now you can flip your page or your packets to the multiple choice section. Number one, what is the most likely reason the author describes Wingari's childhood in paragraphs one through three? A, to show Wingari's early connection to nature. B, to contrast Wingari's country with other places. C, to explain why Wingari had to go away to school. D, to show how hard Wingari worked as a young girl. Number two, in paragraph six, why did it seem as if Wangari had been away from Kenya for 20 years? A, she had missed her family. B, her memories were confusing. C, her country had changed so much. D, she had grown up living in another place. Number three, what do paragraphs nine and 10 describe? A, how the solutions will work. B, what people hope to achieve by their actions. C, the people that people need control, need to control the forces of nature. D, that many unplanned results can come from one cause. Number four, reread paragraph 14. Based on the selection, how can an idea be both simple and big? A, it can be new and interesting. B, it can be basic and important. C, it may require many people to help. And D, it may take a long time to carry out. Number five, what do Wingari's comments in paragraph 21 suggest? A, Kenya need, needed to assign soldiers to harder jobs. B, Kenya needed to train people to guard themselves. C, Kenya needed to focus more on developing its military. D, Kenya needed to be improved so it would be worth defending. If at any time you need to pause the video, you can do so. Um, we're about to move on to part two of the quiz. Quiz one, part two, Frank's first opera. Frank was filled with nerves as the stage lights came on. He had been practicing for months, but still found himself surprisingly panicked at what he was about to do. His teacher was on the stage announcing each of the talent show contestants before they went on. From backstage, peering out from behind the red velvet curtain, Frank heard her call for him. Our next contestant is sixth grader Frank Muniz. Give him a warm welcome. The teacher and the audience members began to applaud. Frank nervously made his way on stage and up to the microphone. The lights flooded down on him. 
making it almost impossible to see who was in the crowd. A sea of hundreds of shadow faces stared back at him. Somewhere out there were his father and grandmother, who were probably just as nervous as he was. It was Frank's first time in the talent show and the first time he had ever sang publicly. This is it, he thought. You have to be brave. You have to do your best. But the encouraging thoughts dissolved as skeptical ones took their place. What if I mess up? What if I embarrass myself in front of the whole school? He took a few deep breaths, his palms sweating as he nervously adjusted the microphone. His nerves must have showed because suddenly a voice from the audience shouted, you can do it, Frank. The rest of the audience hollered and clapped, encouraging Frank to begin his performance. Frank smiled. He could do this. Thank you, everybody, he said earnestly into the microphone. Tonight, I'm going to sing for you a song I've been practicing. It isn't on the radio and probably isn't very popular, but, well, it's an opera song. The crowd began to murmur. This young boy was going to sing opera, not something cool like hip hop. A few of the older boys in the audience laughed, doubtful that his performance was going to be very good. But Frank took a breath. He knew he had to try. After all, it could be pretty difficult to achieve his dream of becoming a world-class opera singer if he couldn't even perform in front of his own classmates. He waited for the murmurs of the crowd to subside, grabbed the microphone, and nodded to his teacher to begin the music. Then he began to sing. The song, which was completely in Italian, beautifully filled the auditorium. Each word... The Frank sang echo off the chairs, the ceiling, and the floor. All of Frank's nerves went away as he became completely immersed in his favorite activity of singing opera. The audience members were stunned. Frank's math teacher, who had always thought of him as a shy kid, was shocked. Who would have thought such a seemingly quiet kid would have such a powerful and tremendous voice? The older boys who had originally laughed at Frank for singing opera were now silent, silently entranced. They couldn't take their eyes off of Frank and found themselves impressed and inspired by his ability to master such a difficult song. A song in Italian, no less. In the back of the auditorium, Frank's father and godmother, grandmother beamed proudly with tears in their eyes. Frank's grandmother whispered, that's our boy, and Frank's father nodded with the grandest smile on his face. The entire audience was completely blown away by the magnificent performance given by young Frank. When the song was over, Frank opened his eyes. The next few seconds of silence felt like an eternity while Frank caught his breath. What did they think? Did they like it? I've been practicing for months. I hope they like it. Suddenly, the auditorium erupted into applause and shouts. The crowd was wildly cheering for Frank and his exceptional performance. Frank's heart began to race with excitement. They had loved his performance. He smiled and took a bow while the other crowd rose to their feet and continued cheering for him. It was clear he was the audience favorite. After everyone else had performed, the judges be began to announce the winners. There was a visible sense of shock, even disappointment, in the audience when Frank was announced as the second place winner, right behind the first place winner, a seventh grade girl who had done some admittedly impressive magic tricks. Frank was gracious, however, and smiled when he received his silver medal. As the auditorium began to clear out, Frank's teachers and classmates congratulated him and praised his performance. Many even said that they thought he should have won first place, first prize. Frank's father put an arm around him and asked, are you disappointed that you didn't win, my son? Frank shook his head, the brightest smile still on his face. Dad, my goal was to prove to myself that I can be an opera singer if I really put in the effort. I did that tonight, so for me, I did win. Frank smiled, and his father and grandmother gave him a warm hug. The family knowing that Frank had a promising future ahead of him. So we're moving on to the second um, part of the multiple choice. Remember that you can pause, you can rewind um, this video 
whenever you may feel the need to. Number one, what is the central idea of the story? A, grit and determination are the keys to unlocking your hopes for the future. B, after practicing for a long time, Frank performs in a talent show. The audience applauds after he sings, and it is clear he will win. The theme is that hard work will always pay off. C, Frank had been practicing singing opera for a talent show. He sings wonderful, wonderfully, and he knows he may embarrass himself. Sorry, friends. C, Frank has been practicing singing opera for a talent show. He sings wonderfully, and the crowd cheers for him. Even though he does not win, the story demonstrates that hard work and effort can help you achieve your goals. D, Frank sings in a talent show even though he is incredibly nervous and knows he may embarrass himself. He does better than expected and commits to keep practicing. The story shows that people should never lose faith in themselves. Number two, which detail best shows Frank's pride in his performance? A, I did that tonight, so for me, I did win. Paragraph 14. B, Frank was gracious, however, and smiled when he received his silver medal. Paragraph 11. C, Frank smiled, he could do this. Paragraph 4. D, it was clear he was the audience favorite. Paragraph 10. Number three, what is the meaning of the word skeptical in paragraph three? A, disbelieving. B, concerned. C, doubtful. D, supportive. Number four, what does paragraph six reveal about Frank? A, he knows he can win if he does his best. B, he is apprehensive about whether or not he will be able to perform well. C, his Determination is stronger than his nervousness. D, he has spent significant time practicing for the talent show. Number five, how does paragraph two contribute to the structure of the story? A, by introducing a conflict the protagonist will face. B, by providing important details about the setting. C, by setting up a contrast between characters. Or D, by providing background information. Okay, this is the end of this video. Remember, you're only choosing one answer for each question on the multiple choice. You can feel free to go back into the video and re-listen to any stories if you need to, or if you need to hear the questions re-read, you can go back now.